Hello, it's Jim Hutchins for the Jerusalem Connection Spot Report for this week. <clears throat> I'm sure you've been following the events going on in Kiev and the Ukraine. And uh, this has been of special interest to us because uh, on January 27th of this year, uh, our own Vice President Shelley Neese represented the Jerusalem Connection and also the paintings of my wife Pat, some 40 paintings uh, entitled The Auschwitz Album Revisited, and they're on a permanent uh, uh, exhibition in uh, eastern in eastern Ukraine. The name of the town's a tongue twister, Den Propetrovsk, Den Propetrovsk. But we've been especially interested in this because of what's going on there. And uh, the sponsor for this uh, exhibit for us uh, it was a Jewish lady and her husband from uh, Finland, actually, uh, Dr. Ina and Misha Rogacci of the uh, Rogacci Foundation. And we're very grateful for the, them acting as our curators, and, and uh, they did an excellent job with that. Uh, Dr. Rogacci has written an article that uh, our roots uh, seven, our roots Sheva, picked up. She says this, <clears throat> the most worrisome and largely overseen factor of the ongoing Ukrainian tragedy to me is the mighty presence among the opposition hardcore militants from the ultra-right nationalistic parties and the movements there. The threat which is posed by those forces shall not be underestimated, especially in the context of rapidly rising ultra-national forces all over Europe, a new ugly fashion of nowadays, uh, very divisive, uh, and as uh, among the peoples, and as a result of that, racial hatred is emerging. Ukraine now has become a tragic showcase of this alarming threat. The civic society, uh, widespread simply, has no luxury, neither does it have the moral right for allowing the repetition of the Nazi-like nightmares. Uh, there are others who refer to that as well. Uh, <clears throat> Ludmilla Yoga. And an article said, uh, this is not a revolution. This is not a revolution in Ukraine. This is war. She says, uh, it should be emphasized that only achievement of Ukraine during the, the, those 20 years of independence was keeping the peace. Today, Ukraine is lost. Ukraine is lost. People are afraid to wake up in the morning and nobody wants to hear all the bad news about the greed of the government. She closes her article by saying, what will happen tomorrow? We'll know tomorrow. However, we understand that peace will not be forthcoming. In light of that, the Jewish agency has <clears throat> pledged millions of dollars in emergency aid to the Jewish community in Ukraine. They recognize the upswing in anti-Semitism, especially since the, uh, the uh, opposition forces have come against the uh, establishment in Kiev. The uh, <clears throat> recent reports indicated that extremists had been targeting the Jewish community in Ukraine, including a member of the opposition associated with neo-Nazi groups. There it is again. Anti-Semitism in Ukraine has picked up throughout the unrest, which began in late November. The Ukrainian Jewish community is one of the largest Jewish communities in the world with some 200,000. Most Jews reside in Kiev, but there are others scattered throughout uh, Odessa, Lvov, and uh, Dnipropetrovsk. Uh, <clears throat> over 330,000 Ukrainian Jews made Aliyah. They went back to Israel, helped by the Jewish agency, since the collapse of the Soviet Union, including some 2,200, 2,200 last year. This has a current events significance, certainly, a diplomatic and political significance, but it has a biblical significance as well. Scholars have long recognized that at the, in the end times, there'll be a ten-nation confederation that emerges that will be headed by the lawless one, the evil one, the antichrist, if you will. And uh, <clears throat> Daniel speaks of this in Daniel chapter 7, verses 8 and verse 24. You can speak of this, but he says that there will be a three-nation coalition that emerges initially. And uh, evidently that three-nation coalition will be in existence prior to Daniel's 70th week, the seven-year period that culminates in the coming of Jesus. 
The only one that has really dealt with this in some detail, comparing Scripture with Scripture that I'm aware of, is Robert Van Campen in this classic book, The Sign. I can't recommend this highly enough to you. Get this book. It's uh, Eschatology 101. It's all you need to know about the end times. The Sign by Robert Van Campen. And uh, in this uh, book, Van Campen uh, points to this three-nation trio that immersion, uh, three-nation confederation that emerges. In summary, then, he says, uh, the three-nation confederacy that the Antichrist initially overthrows will be comprised of three Japhetic, from Japheth, sons of Jacob, Japheth, and formerly strong nomadic peoples of the remote north. These ancestry, uh, whose ancestry can be traced to the same people who both established and ruled the ancient Roman Empire. All three nations will be jealously, zealously, I should say, anti-Semitic in this respect. These nations will continue the consistent pattern followed by all the beast empires that have dominated Israel since the 70 weeks of Daniel and an interlude as well. All of which have been driven by anti-Semitic leaders of Aryan and Japhetic ancestry. He goes on, says, we should watch with anticipation for the rise of a powerful individual who initially will overthrow three Aryan nations soon after this three-nation coalition is formed its leader will initiate a 70th week, the 70th week of Daniel, by making a covenant of death. That's what Isaiah says, Isaiah 28. Covenant of death with Israel, who will despair in sheer terror when the true identity of the leader is later revealed. Thus we turn now from the realm of the prior conditions and events to what we actually happen. Look for this. This is something to, to be aware of and to look for. And uh, the Ukraine, along with Syria, Iran, that's, uh, there are the, a lot of those nations are in that, that same vicinity. Uh, Ukraine is considered by many scholars as contemporary Gomer. And that, of course, is referred to in Isaiah, or, uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39. We need to stay in touch. The Lord is with us, and he is working his plan according to his timetable. The Apostle Paul said this in uh, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4. He says, Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, who which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, but not only to me, but also to all who long for his appearing. Do you long for the appearing of Jesus, the coming of our Messiah, to establish his kingdom and rule reign? I hope you do. Till next week, Ode Ki Yavo Shilo, or until Messiah comes, Yivareka Yahweh. God bless you, and God bless yours.